Hello students, welcome back to the lecture number 4 and in this lecture we will discuss about some problems from exercise 5.1. So let's start with the first question. So in the question number 1, the instruction given that which of the following statements are true or false. So you have to identify out of this 5 statements, not sentence, out of this 5 statements which are true and which are false. You have to identify. Why these are known as statements? Because this sentence have two chances. Either they are right or they are false. That is why this is known as statements, not sentence. Right. So the first point is only one line can pass through a single point. Okay. So there is a single point. Suppose O. Through this point, only one line can pass. But we know that through a single point, we can draw infinite number of straight lines. See? Through a single point, we can draw infinite number of straight lines. But in the question, it is given that only one line can pass through it. So this statement is a true statement or a false statement? It is a false statement. The reason is that through a single point, infinite number of straight lines can pass. Right? Coming to second question. In the second question is given that there are infinite number of lines can pass through two points. Okay, so there are two points. Point O and point P. Then as we know through two distinct points we can draw one and only one straight line. We cannot draw more than one straight line. But here in this statement it is given that there are infinite number of lines can pass through these two points. No, it is false statement. Okay. Why? Because through any two distinct points we can draw only one straight line. Okay. So the three number question is a terminated line. Terminated line means a line segment. Okay. Terminated line means a line segment. A terminated line can be produced indefinitely on both sides. We have also studied in the five postulates of Euclid that a terminated line can be produced in this direction. Okay, infinitely. Similarly, this terminated line can be produced in this direction also indefinitely. So the conclusion is that a terminated line or line segment can be produced in both the direction infinitely okay indefinitely means infinitely so this statement is a true statement it is true okay fourth number question if two circles are equal then their radius are also equal is it true or false suppose this is a circle okay and this is another circle if two circles are equal, two circles are equal means if this circle has been cut out from this and placed on this circle, then the two circles are equal. If the two circles are equal, then what you find? You find both center will coincide on each other. One center lies on another center. I mean to say, if you cut this circle out and paste on this circle, then both the circle seems to be a single circle. And their center will coincide with each other. If this is the center of this circle, this is the center of another circle. Then both O and O dash, this is known as O dash, okay, center. Or you can say P center. Then these two center will coincide with each other, okay. They will, suppose this is the center, another center will lie on it, right. So that, what will happen? So that the radius of both the circles, are equal. Okay. Why? Because this circle completely coincide on this circle. And their center will also coincide so that their radius will be equal. If its radius is 5 cm, then its radius must be 5 cm. The reason is that both the circles are equal. It is given in this statement. Okay. So if two circles are equal, that means one circle coincide on another circle, then their center will coincide. So that the radius must be equal. Then the radius are equal. So it is also a 
true statement understood next question if ab is equal to pq for example ab suppose this is a length 5 cm okay and it is a this point is b is equal to pq pq means pq is another length segment whose length must be 5 cm because it is given ab is equal to pq and pq is equal to xy pq is how much 5 cm then you have to draw xy now what is the length of xy the length of xy must be also 5 cm why because it is given pq is equal to xy so then ab is equal to xy is it a true or a false statement yes it is a true statement why because here ab is also 5 cm xy is also 5 cm and we have studied also if two things see if two things ab and xy are equal to the same thing that means ab is equal to pq and xy is equal to pq if two things are equal to the same things then the two things are equal to one another this is the axiom one of euclid's geometry if the height of myself okay if the height of myself is equal to the height of my father and the height of my brother is equal to the height of my father then do my, do me and my brother have same height yes we have same height because if my height is 5 feet 5 inch then my father side will be 5 feet 5 inch my brother side will be also 5 feet 5 inch then we get the conclusion that my height is equal to my brother's height so this statement is also a true statement you can write it to be understood coming to the question number 2 in question number 2 you have to define such terms like what are parallel lines what are perpendicular lines what is line segment what is radius of circle as well as what is a square okay so we have to define such terms so let's define the first term parallel lines what are the parallel lines suppose there are two lines okay l1 and l2 if the distance between these two lines if the distance between these two lines at any point is fixed or the distance between the two lines is constant okay then these two lines are known as parallel lines okay this is the first condition what is the condition the distance between the two lines must be fixed or same and there is also a second condition what is the second condition the second condition is that if we produce these two lines okay infinitely they they will never meet each other okay if you produce these two lines in any direction then they will never meet each other okay these are the two basic condition in order to be parallel lines so what are the two basic condition the first condition is that the distance between the two lines must be same in the second condition if we produce these two lines in any direction then they will never intersect meet each other okay so this is the definition so let's write it two lines are said to be parallel lines okay if the distance if the distance between them okay is same and the second condition is and if we produce these two lines in any direction right then they will meet or doesn't meet then they will not meet each other at any point then they will not meet each other at any point okay then these two lines are known as 
parallel lines okay so here the l1 line is parallel to l2 line symbolically you can write l1 parallel to l2 this is the symbol of parallel see l1 parallel to l2 okay parallel lines means they will never meet each other but suppose they meet each other suppose if two lines after producing these are the two lines if they will produce in one direction then they will meet each other then these type of lines are known as intersecting lines what are they they are known as intersecting lines if you want then you can note down if the two lines intersect or meet each other after producing then these two lines are known as intersecting lines okay next is perpendicular lines but what are perpendicular lines see two lines are said to be perpendicular two lines l1 and l2 are said to be perpendicular if they make an angle or they intersect each other see these lines and this line meet each other at a point o if the two lines meet each other and make an angle 90 degree at the point of intersection this point is known as point of intersection why it is known as point of intersection because at this point they will meet each other or intersect each other right this point is known as point of intersection okay so what is the definition two lines are said to be perpendicular lines if they will meet each other at an angle 90 degree at the point of intersection understood so you can write two lines are perpendicular lines okay if the two lines if the two lines meet each other meet means intersect suppose this is a line okay and this is another line now you can see these two lines intersect each other at a point at this point this point is known as point of intersection now they make how many angle how much angle 90 degree here 90 degree here 90 degree everywhere they make 90 degree okay then such type of lines are known as perpendicular lines okay meet or intersect each other at an angle 90 okay so here the line l1 is perpendicular to the line l2 so l1 is perpendicular to l2 so you can symbolically write it as l1 perpendicular to l2 so this is the symbol of perpendicular okay this is the symbol of perpendicular and this is the symbol of parallel So L1 line is perpendicular to L2 line. Next is what is a line segment? As you know, a line segment, especially is a line which has both starting point and an ending point. Okay. So a line segment is a line which has both starting point and an ending point. Okay. So a line which has both starting point and ending point suppose the starting point is known as a and the ending point is known as b then the line segment ab can be represented as ab and above it you can draw a line segment ab line segment okay if it will be a uh, straight line then you have to represent like this ab straight line if it will be a ray then you have to write like this ab okay so this is your line segment next is radius of circle what is the radius of a circle 
So circle means what? Circle is a two dimensional figure, and a circle has a center inside it at the mid position. It has a center. Okay, this is the center, and this portion is known as circumference or perimeter or boundary, whatever you can call it. But in geometrical sense, you have to write circumference or perimeter. Okay, so this is known as circumference okay what is this this is circumference okay now what is the radius what is the radius so radius is the distance between the center and any point on the circumference suppose you take a point on this circumference suppose this point is a okay and the center is then radius is the distance from the center to a point lying on circumference okay so this distance is known as radius okay so write it radius is the distance okay between the center and the point on a circumference or line on the circumference of this circle understood so what is the radius radius is the distance between the or distance from center to a point and that point should be lie on the circumference not anywhere it may lie here it may lie here it may lie here it may lie here then these all are known as the radius okay but it should not lie inside the circle it should lie on the circle on the circumference so these are known as the radius okay r r r and this distance is always fixed the radius distance is always fixed you can write it the radius is always fixed right next is the next definition is square what is a square you already have idea about it what what is a square a square first of all a square is a polygon okay it is a polygon it is how many sides it has 1 2 3 4 it is four sides and all the sides are equal so it is a regular polygon okay so a polygon whose four sides are equal not only its four sides but also all the four angles are all equal so a square is a polygon whose four sides as well as four angles are equal okay now understood now let us solve question number 3 In question number three, it is given that if a point C lies between two points A and B, so it means there is a point C which lies in between A and B. Okay, and AB is a straight line. So C is a point which lies on this straight line, right? And it is given that such that AC is equal to BC. So it is given that the condition is AC is equal to BC. It means AC. This distance is equal to which distance? BC. This distance. Suppose AC is five centimeter. Then what will be the distance of this BC? It is also five centimeter. Then what is the total distance? The total distance is AB. So you can write the total distance AB is equal to how much? This plus this. Five plus five is equal to ten. Okay. we only assume it okay it is an only assumption now you have to prove ac is equal to half ab so you have to prove ac is equal to half ab means ac means what this this is equal to half of ab this is ab it's half ac is half of ab okay the total length is ab ac is the half of ab we have to now by assumption we can easily say yes if ab is 10 then ac is how much we have taken 
high sign negative then no doubt that ac is the half of ab okay but in mathematically you have to prove this how let's see see one thing is here since it is given that ac is equal to bc it means what it means c is the midpoint okay if it is given that suppose there is a point c it is a straight line there is a point c now i i told you tell you tell you that this distance is equal to this distance it means what it means this point is the midpoint right similarly c is the midpoint c is the midpoint between a and b now you have to prove ac is equal to half ac see you can prove it by using two process i will tell you both the process okay so the first process let me tell you it is given that ac is equal to bc in the condition session it is given that ac is equal to bc now let us add ac in both the side see this is the lhs this is the rhs okay suppose 5 here also 5 if we add 2 here then 2 here then is there any change in the number no there is no change so it is the lhs portion it is the rhs portion so we add sc in the lhs and sc in also rhs so there is no change in the equation now sc plus sc is what 2sc why because x plus x is 2x so sc plus sc is 2x now bc plus sc is how much bc okay that means bc plus ac ac means this so bc plus ac is how much the total length ab that is understood so you can write here that bc plus ac is equal to ab the total length. now you have to find ac so write ac two should be move towards the right hand side when two move to the right hand side it will be divided why because in the left hand side it will be multiplied so it will be divided ab by 2 so you can write ac is equal to ab by 2 can be written as half into ab okay see this is the proof that we need this is the proof ac is equal to half of this is the first procedure and the second procedure is since you know that the total length ab the total length ab can be written as sc plus bc sc plus bc is ab okay we can write this now ab is equal to ac plus c in the place of bc we can substitute sc why because it is given that ac is equal to bc so in the place of bc we can substitute ac so write ac here and also write the reason or mention the reason here bc is equal to ac it is given in the question so now ab is equal to ac plus ac means 2ac now you can write first you can write 2ac then you have to write ab ac is equal to 2 moves to the right hand side it will be divided is equal to half so in this way you can also prove the sc is equal to half ab okay